from Medicine Lodge. From Medicine Lodge to cold water. From cold water to protection and beyond. This undulating line intersects no industry, yet slows to central, resumes a bare number, and finally frays in shallow tracks where black kettle and standing feather took their geologic time and left no cairn. Salt and gypsum collapsed to form a basin shadows race across, their smooth momentum broken only by a spindly windmill with its corrugated trough or scratchy wind-rattled cottonwood, a graph of fluctuating force, anything upright under revision. A twist of hair threads the ring of a dried-up sink as stocking clouds and fibrous sunder clouds draw silver from common sagebrush, or wing clouds streak the afternoon with grains of polished wood, only to kindle flame as everything shuts down but cloudworks, unfinished parts of a world. This is a, um, a version of a early troubadour lyric. Um, I think it's a, yeah. it's a William Duke of Aquitaine. Nothing song. I made this up from nothing. It's not myself I sing, or love, or anything that has a source. I dream these words while riding on my horse. I've neither youth nor age. Ambitions out of range, I feel no joy or rage to see them go. One midnight worked the change that made me so. I wonder, do I wake from dreams or dream I wake? Beneath a sheet, I shake and clutch my heart, though part of me, aloof, opaque, remains apart. For such uncertainty, I've found no remedy in psychotherapy or sedatives. I rummage through debris where nothing lives. A friend I've never met, unknown to me as yet, has kindled no regret or happiness, no tender sobriquet to curse or bless. As coldly radiant as stars and light years distant, this expectation can't embrace a life, but shines on ignorant of lust or strife. My song of nothing done, I ride from Avignon and leave my words to one who turns a key to find a deadbolt drawn and stable empty. Expecting. What will she, now is she, trailing clouds, yet hearing our muffled voices all the while, from this dark world, or and wide? What will she mew or bray, as any envoy might derive an embryon from animal, or amnion from tender lamb, the tethered to a human form, an embryon in amnion, or bloom of jellies at the whim of storm and tide, the ocean's roar above, around, and then inside. And this is uh, the same dear person a few days later. Obad. A vacant hour before the sun, and with it a vow's pneumatic hush, the deep and nautical clunk of wood, chanson du ricochet of rivet gun, Trowel tap and bolt drawn, the moon sets and water breaks. Curled within a warm pleroma, playing for time, you finally turn and push your face toward November's glint of frost, grains of salt, weak clarities of dawn. Yes, uh, Stacy mentioned travelers are um, travelers are uh, migrating birds. 
So uh, the traveler here is not me, but the bird. Traveler. From the foot of Cotopaxi and across the gulf, a Blackburnian warbler follows a pulse, follows Polaris and the pole's magnetic field through travail and travels long ordeal until he drops to a black walnut's pinnate leaves, tossing like waves in the North Sea and glances toward my lamplit stationary world of smooth plains against a cloud his throat's flame. Tangled yarn. Garner, sewing needle, exclamation damsel, pennant, flying eater, fleeing ether, blew it. Steel yard, spindle, booklet. Skimmer, scarce or common. Sand or shadow dragon. Cruiser, shadow damsel. Devil's horse or saddle. Darning needle, dancer. Meadow hawk or glider. Water naiad, thread tail. Sylph or sprite or penny nail. Early April. Under the Sinclair's Brontosaurus sign, three men collect around a coffee pot on metal folding chairs. One talks of rust on a spring tooth harrow, matters of cultivation, while the others ruminate on plastic mugs. Down Route M, the lek returns to a low ridge of soy and hissing fescue booming grounds abandoned to the long nose of a tractor where only groans had cast a shadow. Tippinucus Cupido taught Lakotas how to dance, its throat patch yellow as egg yolks, its booming glug of a low tone swallowed, head feathers erect in practiced thread. Desires kettle drum. Theirs is a culture more intractable than Forbes or Scottish fiddle tunes. A county south at Adam only Amon, Mormons wait in a canvas blind as fog lifts from combed furrows for a Clovis Christ to come. If he does, they'll send him up a tree to scout what's rushing across the low ridge, whether prairie chicken or machine. Both live forever until they die. Marco Polo. As dusk turns to dark, swallows turn to bats. Their smooth parabolas of flight erode to flutters. Emitting dry clicks above the peak of what we hear, they probe for moth wings. Perched in her high chair, my daughter echoes the names of things in early Mandarin or Cantonese. Each syllable returns without its edge of consonants to test the contours of a human face. As blue turns to black, the neighbor's children shout Margaret, Polo, and Antiphony across the swimming pool, the sightless id calling to its ego, groping toward a mark beyond the pale. Riding through the Gashin Gobi Desert, in search of Kublai Khan, a traveler might nod off and veer from his companions, hearing voices or the clatter of caravans through the dark across the scallop dunes as particles collide in booming sands. If he follows, dreaming, woe betide him. So the Mongols fasten little bells around the necks of camels, goats, and mules. Their ringing rides along with us like stars Rough patch. You can tell by symptoms of neglect something of his circumstance. The chipped and buckled eaves, deflated jack-o'-lantern beside the stoop, an ember under snow, or red ants swarming the sill, 
crossing a line of cinnamon in some far-flung military action. You can tell by frying onions their thick domestic weather or the grim satisfaction with which his vacuum overlooks a plain of fur and dust. I can tell from a little just what a whole lot means. You treat me like somebody you ain't never seen. Hackle stacker, mayfly cripple, and Bloom's parachute ant crowd an ashtray to rarefy the quality of failure. Mornings, a frowsy manx kneads his chest with claws unsheathed, thrumming with desire and content in equal measure. Every other weekend, he rolls out a court-appointed cock from the closet for his daughter. You can feel with your fingertips against his metal door vibrations from the interstate or seismic evidence of Furry Lewis, circa 1928. Nowhere. Sifu John has left the dojo and struck out on his own. No more shit from Master Zhang. No endless adjudications of single whip, no banquets, bouts, dues, or membership. His only student, big dude with a tight, slick ponytail of Steven Seagal, got lit and locked a bartender in tiger claw, then spent a night in jail. <laughs> Clearly distinguish empty from full, the classics instruct. Mornings, feeling thick, John crosses off his mother's list at Schnooks, returning home with tourniquets of plastic bags. Evenings, Sifu and student grasp the sparrow's tail beside a picnic pavilion perched above the park's basin, its pooling shadows emptied of pedestrians. As snow begins to fall, they return to fundamentals of Peng, Lu, Zhi, on, slow as three-toed sloths under the orange glare of sodium lights, with all else thrown in darkness, getting nowhere. Circle line. Curve of recurrence, horns of dawn. Wheels touch down on the long ceremonial runway, a grand plaza of stenciled arrows to and from the sky. Soft clatter of plates, clack of rain coming on, her head sunk in a leather menu, her white fingers turn a fork and harrow the tablecloth with tines. At the electric cinema, a hand waits its turn outside a bag of popcorn. <clears throat> Browsing through a bookshop's narcotic dusk, she comes across an aqua tent of brook trout in the bargain cellar, submerged from street life. Day slips past. Stout and tobacco smoke, tail end of a head cold, bespattered pigeon coat. A bathtub brindled with rust glows in the dust. Her white knee, sleek as a seal, breaks the surface. Estuaries overflow across the tile. Saturday morning. Regret the time wasted on work, which finds you even here, but not as sure as a steep ascent or the unremitting need for learning facts and calculating unresolved events. Ripples at the edge of an ancient sea. Lisa Gang rings from water and iron, corrugations of unclenched surface, graffiti, light as lines from a graphite pencil, scribbled around a medallion of lichen absorbing the sun. Wind and rain go on eroding hoodoo from bluff, the mutable form of horse or mushroom, loaf or anvil, a cloven god unresolved and self-absorbed and slow collapse, back to the plastic bed and hoof clatter, just beyond an ice sheet's leading edge. 
a, a close shave. From Baden, or what's left of it, pursue a long, smooth curve of road that skirts the northern flood wall to parallel a palisade of channel markers sunk in earth, the folly of the cement works. Its blank silos overlook a pit of argillaceous shale, the fine and fossilized remains of bivalves, sponges, spines of shark, quarried and burnt with limestone charge to alchemize a binder of brick in the city's shallow, brittle crust. Around a bend, the riverbed swings wide to open a fetch of field. Shadows skim its mucky thaw as juncos, whisked about by the wind on courses neither fixed nor free, give but a quick metallic chink. Behind you, rain has wrapped the bluffs and scumbled limbs of sycamores. Ahead, each bend assumes the name of a gaudy packet run aground, or snagged and sunk, or blown to bits. For one, the side wheel Amazon, blue perfect wheelhouse painted green, that struck a honey locust pike, still rooted deep in river mud, and tore its hull from stem to stern. Down in minutes, within a month, an island silted up behind. A flock of luggage floated south, remarked by those on Water Street, loafing before the trading post in the barber shop of Madame Crawl. She can eternally be found at work in her elaborate room, toujours prey to cliff and, clip and coif, or wield her razor with great skill and for those who favor her with their chains. The scent of ginger tonic blends with that of borscht, its acrid tang. Consumed behind a wooden screen as Illinois grows dark. In this, her second year since coming west. Thanks very much. Into the eve of a picnic of trees of the strawberry rugulet rabbit Tyrone, into a glazed economic disturbance caused by the rain most dramatic and strange. Small whole moon in the sky, fish-like in semblance, as damp as an amphibrach, the Anthony Braxton gland of Ant Launch. Winds blown shutters, angry household gods, wet September horses. Schubert's trout quintet, shy Franz Schubert. Two German shepherds, Al-Qaeda in Flushing, and Earth's microphone, willy-nilly. Into the eve of multitudinous seas in Carnadine, all one word, shy Franz Schubert, Yuki Lily Atkins, feverish hippo Zion, fallen giraffe incident. And the mysteries, Christ, death, genitals, the stimulation phase, Salivation of the Lamb, William Partridge Orange, Boring Dutch Milkmaid, The Paranormal Finger, 7 West 46 Streets, Aristocratic Vagueness Panda, Turquoise Buddha Henpeck Pacification, Fleckner Sarkis Bop, Object Relations Banana, Offending Purple Snowsuit, With Tender Purloined Sunlight at Winter's Lip, specializing in yellow starlings in flight over Arthur's seat. This very linty cow, that useless Tibetan babysitter, <laughs> the prime meridian, a pale dead moose in the sky, into the eve of a picnic of trees of the strawberry rugulet rabbit Tyrone, Tenemos Par Chinches, Helen Mirren naked, running from what? <laughs> the wild screaming beaches of the ancient mariner, his Dutch husband and four mosques, by the by an ermine trouser snake. Over the rainbow of red meat hedonism, get rich quick, lose weight now, Pasha Parker penguin. And on Brick Lane, a television fell from a lorry. We bought it for 50 quid. Waves of sleep, a lovely Lincoln, 
albuterol first snow. On bodega dust include emancipatory relationships, Odysseus' very original boobs, and the warm, apt facts of John Thaw, Ham, and train stations. This moon dude glass, this small moon, this ba 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 first instance of grandmother in grave these fleeting forms, very gentle seek, book of penis, Italians in Florida, and Alan also. Register individual Mayweed, Harvey, Jack, and Bob, Robert, Jess, and Stan, Anne's Red Noir, Lonely Frank O'Hara, Perpetual Free Actuaries, Almost Actual Giraffe, Humorless Minimalist Electronica, Very Linty Cow, American Medicated Individualists. Leap over a large rock splendored with April moss. For the sea, sailing, and the French Revolution. Pines and pineapples. Gumming finger food and wintercress with weapons grade literature. His fiancée Jane sewing chickens together. The sparrows in the cherry tree. The hedgehogs in the chanterelle bin. Locust and Bartleby. First two worlds. Blender, air conditioner, guinea pig, and the pedestrian on Queens Boulevard. A wriggler, I, all of nature, an occasional seagull, house, castle, environs, a pale dead moose in the sky, an idiot in a cat suit, an Afghan Amir, the Persian Empire, and two Matildas. Cher dumps me in a dream. <laughs> a disregarded entity in Wiggum's forest. A titty rizzle after the Z, after the E, a luminous simultaneity. Silver and hearts, Prophet Muhammad in a bear suit. An omelet corner. My actual entity, my baby bear. My presentational immediacy, my beach plum in blue lobelia for Mary Osborne, this year and the next that is scented vaguely of potatoes. There was too much of Lester in that room. Removed his caterer in the Koreas. A ready-made world, Salerno's water buffaloes, the lemon sun in the sky, the silver cat in the nepeta and Lewis's mother, William Blake's mother, Sun Ra's space world, the sixth extinction, this Peter's banjo, that Alan's harmonium. What do you know about chickens, about sadness, and raspberry jam, and the hundred thousand songs of Milarepa? A molecular empathy, plinkets of sunlight connecting all the stars. old-fashioned hominid, yes, to have a favorite place. Into the eve of a picnic of trees of the strawberry rugelet rabbit Tyrone. Contemplative roommate wanted, no snow globes. <laughs> that new things happen in the equinox with a baby named Ellington. Brad Will's laundry in a dream. Call me Hester, drooping Joe Pieweed. For her now, a wood mite, white sweet clover, pale dead tree in the sky, the world imperfect, while bumblebees breakfast in the lamb's ear stalks. Own some land, have some trees, Google in Indonesia in a dream. Land of wheels, dominated by sycamores, we talked about fish for hours, faggots, pie, bacon, then sudden rain, forgotten monkey amber, the catalpa tree, filthy third world playground, 
alder, hazel, pine, an italic gate, an antediluvian world. Deep metaphysical fatigue, beautiful but stupid, and Thule also. Let me slip into and out of the world, companions, mud, adversity. Two snow monkeys, two rabid beavers, poor Franz Kafka. These ancient macaroons and huge Victorian fairies. My baby bear, my gorgeous goose, my beach clone. An occasional lycanthropy McDonald's in Leroy with ghost-free rooms, white sweet clover, water of night. Part two, a boa constructor. This is where language comes in, so um, I have to give credit to B for some of this. Right? He wrote some of this, yeah. <clears throat> a boa constructor. Thomas brings soap, a fear of chipmunks, the end of restaurants, some bears and dumpsters, and cucumbers, apples, and mint. Protect and survive the first yoga pose, the Ramadan tent, the Arapaho crazy society, and rink in the ducks' psycho sheep shriek, panthy cow sway. The letter A at Auntie Anne's, Alexis, Ambrose, Amen. Three missing things, frog-like descendants. An American piranha's last exorcist nanny. No, nose, boob. A petite hibou. Nice mibble noise, alpine stoop sitter. To be a piece of work. To eat by. And to do nothing. On Friendly Street, the honeybees. The ash trees flash of amber. Around the corners of the day, the ghost arbor. October's aster shadows. Say Quirkus borealis, the leaf torn from its tip. First K sound, dog, nose, eye, up, more, cat, knee, ball, boom. Milk, apple, cracker, trapped Chilean miners in a spectacularly disappointing universe. Peabot, Sequay, Peking, Duckhouse, Dal, Ball, Owl. A plotter, I, a globular body derived from the voice of a Bird, rock, ring. Perplexed by sheep. Perplexed by sheep. Dance, art, owls. My own language, his tolling elves, her baby bear, and Michael also. The penguins listening to the gramophone of Karl Marx's revolution. Dance, art cow. Eat and dance. Shalom, hungry Jew. Of the emperor and his genitals. Of a hungry Oaxacan space dog. Oh, what is going on? Of an underage. I'm gonna wait for one second. Alright, I'm just gonna go with it. Of the emperor and his genitals, of a hungry Oaxacan space dog, of an underage Moroccan pole dancer, the Nazi sublime, the temple of Dender, Duncan swimming naked with petite. African carnivores. Owl, ice, owl, a yam diva, sea lions, mongooses, alpacas, teeth, walrus, kitties, pie, the moon. 
I keep a chart with stars, heat for sleep, Portuguese cuddle-up time, and Nancy Samstein's sheep in a dream. Those legends of the Jews, these tales of Hoffman, a Newton Pippin and Sally Hemings offspring, spectral electrical reindeer imperatives, walk, dance, eat, sleep, peep, turtle, rabbit, deer, a periwinkle seal, an Elmo articulation, and boring ethnographic artifacts. First French encore, first letter B. The color of the desert reflected in the fatigues of an Ortiz. The midnight, milkless melancholy of an icy beaver oracle. The case of the elusive tricycle, the return of the quiche-eating moose. This mole, that badger, low blue lobelia in a dream where someone died and left Elton John in charge. <laughs> An nocturnal gnawal in a kite of neige of purple Spanish guys lewd chicken run. Neck, fork, Tail, towel, pocket, deer. This debauched kinesthesia, that big dream porn book. For a moon over hippo, for these first stacked blocks. Chicken, flower, wombat. That it must have recesses, a room designed such, camera, chocolate, bib. I'll do it. Tintin scarecrow Chinese food, the bodies of kings and Elizabeth Taylor also. Her son in Pisces, her moon in Scorpio. His moon in Pisces, his son in Scorpio. Local gentle America corners. Right there it hurts. Decent auto repair service, terrific for the mohair, imprisoned by Scientologists in a dream. The tale of the never-ending hostas, the case of the patty in the pie pan, the translucent gray Elkhart dawnlight of Lori's colon, Danny's job, Karen's pedicure, and Karen's mother's cell phone conversation. No horse, no owl, one minky Jeffrey Link, 14 camelback locomotive ox carts, a red maple Velcro mama, and Gloria Warren's life coach. I see you, camels. I see you, Copernicus Triangle Food Odyssey. When summer showers pass of sleeping lemurs shoeless, a crested wood partridge and a bunch of skinks. That 79 commandos and a dog were involved, that they blew some people up and down. Cute ants and sheep and oatmeal, I like it. George Stanley's coffee in a dream. Her wet crown a vegan stepson. Catch it, stop it, go there. Mulch the zucchinis, fatties with flags. Bees are dancing Gnostics who are contagious, pigs holding hands. A wood mite, a cabbage white, a bad mice, and men say yay. June's white, wet lift of leaf. Have courage, Mr. Wang. Have a big house, a yellow telephone, a blue car. Have mango turkey booby. The first why, the first what, the what that he's doing, the what is that, the who else, and what happened, are you okay? A wood mite. A cabbage white. I'll fly it away, and men say, yay. 
And where is he? And where is she? Michael, Wren, Carrie, Akila, Brad, and someday Harry. Hydrangeas and helicopters. Grief, its proper mode. D in death, under the space between will and remember. That it smells like the painting of a flower. A red flower, a pink kid, a blue dude, and pythons eating strawberries. <coughs> Thank you. So I'm going to read just a few pages from the book, What Did I Do Wrong? I was born in a plastic container. Snow spread a cold coat over my mother. She was shivering, except when my brothers and sisters warmed her belly. I blew heat on her face. The sands of the city were harsh on our newborn ears during that winter night. Soon ice daisies froze on our whiskers and eyelashes, and we heard nothing but each other breathing the occasional chuff-chuff of a car, a siren, and the secret hiss of snow on snow. I never knew my father, but I expect I was a genetic replica of him. He was said to think too much. Hesitation caused his early demise. My mother died five weeks after giving birth. Afterwards, I would feel her presence in the air around me, Something like a pleasant electric charge would pass through my senses, and I would relax. My younger sibling survived, but our brother did not, and neither did our sister, Minnie. I was designated leader of our small family the hour our mother died. But then the other two followed her out. I survived and spent the winter struggling to negotiate that cold city, wandering our birth neighborhood, scavenging, and being tormented by people in ways I would not discuss for months. Events too humiliating for me to remember, let alone narrate, occurred during those first seasons. One thing kept me going. I always looked for the evening star, and when it was clear and I could see it rising, I felt safe. One afternoon I was dragged off to a huge red institution where I heard trolleys humming past the building at night when the others were sleeping. I didn't know where in the city I'd landed, but I was put in a cell that smelled of millions of others before me. This would be my temporary home. Here I was locked up, unable to touch the earth. This captivity marked the beginning of my formation. Everyone thinks that prisoners are sitting in their cells waiting for someone to bail them out. Not true. Each one has a different desire. One might want to sleep and dream and be left alone. Another to make friends with someone down the road. One might want to die in the cell and another to escape and get away from people altogether. Another to go home. I wanted to get away from people. I wanted to get the human mentality out of my system. In that terrible time living on the streets, I had developed an unusual sensitivity to the atmosphere of the human mind. I associated it with imprisonment and ignorance. I came to understand people too well and could see a distressing history stretching back to caves and rage, one that makes it impossible for them to change. They're doomed to repetition because their instincts are dull. I always managed to keep alive a dream of a companion somewhere out in the world. The best I could imagine was someone tall, black, and lean, like Mother's shadow. It was an irresistible drive in me to find this companion, or to have her find me. What's the difference in the end? One sleepless night in my cell, I heard the young guards and cleaners talking over the sound of their boombox. One of them mentioned a place where she went for her vacations. It's really out of the way, she explained, mountains that are blue and cold crystal lakes. So then I had a dream of a black friend and a blue mountain. Beyond that, I only had memories of cement, pebbles, the kick of boots, sirens, starvation, shouts, glass, grit, city stuff, except for my mother's warm belly and the silk of her fur. 
There were plenty of dogs around who were far from comforting. There was a vicious pit bull named Anubis. There was a surly Doberman. There was a German shepherd named Hippo who lunged at other dogs passing near his cage. He had been trained as a guard dog. There were two nasty, snarling miniature collies and a poodle who had fits. There were setters, bulldogs, bassets, and schnauzers, many of these mixed with some other breed. The street dogs, mixed breeds like myself, were generally very intelligent and didn't attack unless they were attacked. Every day I was released into a yard, and it was there that I discovered certain tactics that were not natural to my personality. I became nervous, even violent. I, who once was quiet and restrained, now ran forward and snarled at any curly-haired male approaching me. I kept a safe circle around myself about eight cats long, and attacked by speeding right up to a yellow Labrador or Rottweiler with my teeth bared, even when I knew the dog had no hostility towards me at all. The yard and the cell stank of urine, excrement, cheap food, and wet straw. We prisoners hated our own space. It was so thick with past presences. We lay close together trying to block out the alien sensations. Our keepers were sometimes kind and concerned, but the situation made niceness seem more like a mistake than a plan. Then one day, Hippo the Shepherd told us that we had only a week left to live the life we knew. He told us the puppies were placed in gas chambers after several weeks if nobody bought them. There was only one other option for us. He said, people are creating jobs for us. They make us slaves to human beings. Humans always start a new world with slavery. What comes after slavery? Servitude. And after servitude? Frugality. And after frugality? Greed. And then? Vanity and a search for new slaves. So what should we do? Agree to servitude. There's something missing here, I said. Believe me, Hippo replied, there's nothing missing. I've been chained in dark industrial buildings. I should know. What about an affectionate household? Lady, lazy days in the sun? These comforts are errors in the system that occur when a human is out of sync with reality. So servitude is it? If you're lucky. Lucky, I declared. It's better than dying, Hippo said firmly. Are you sure? Another dog, Slippy, a Cocker Spaniel, told them to act lovable when people came to their cage. This will be our best defense against Hippo's prophecy, she remarked. I went to the back of my cage to ruminate. All I could think about was the time when I was being trained to fight, scooped up off the street by a man of very wide, belt-bursting girth. I was caged with a Rottweiler. We tried to keep our distance in that dead, gray space, but the man tied us together and shouted, Fine! Fine! while he rubbed his, our hands and necks together. We were strangled and entangled, struggling, and at last fiendishly biting each other. Fine! Fine! he roared with immense and pornographic pleasure. We did fight until he released us from our bondage, and we could lick our wounds in the corners of our cell. The one good thing about evil is that it lacks endurance. So that's, and then I'll just read about three poems from here. Um, the Hut. Up the hill is a hut made of sand, where two windows rhyme and the tiles stay on, because they're nailed to a dream. The dreamer wonders, can this be mine? The floor is solid and straight and is amber from sap. The walls don't leak or let out heat from gray embers in the grate. This is the original home at the heart of brutalist design. No storm can slam its shape apart. No thief can carry it off. It dwells in ashen buildings where the present sleeps. 
And this is oil and water. I'm flat out in a bed sit in Jericho while an Irish ship is leaving international waters and heading to Gaza. My underground studio is comfortable and clean, but I'm on my own with this poem and the world situation and the pigeons who warble. It's still spring, the leaves have the watery fullness of birth in them and flap their shadows green. Parks, bikes, and unusual heat are all outside and upstairs beyond an iron railing. The Irish boat is called the Rachel Corey. It has 11 passengers on board who are not conceptualist or corporate, with minds discolored by depressive German philosophy. <laughs> They're activists. I'm discolored by the recent past, and one of those still scratching for a living in this bedsit in Jericho, alone with a poem while the fridge chews its cords and hisses, and a single fly spins around the room. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper, I am a lover of Irish butter. <laughs> Rhythms, company, you are never alone, but make the space around enormous and distant when it's indistinguishable from anything else you can't escape. Rachel Corey, Rachel Corey, come in for dinner now. My bedsit is warm and the bread pushed into the toaster oven. We can cower together until the 20th century has sunk like Atlantis and the sun. A sinkhole in Guatemala, oil pouring from a hole in the water. Is this what the residue of radioactivity looks like? The Irish are sailing to Gaza. In the Gulf, the brown pelicans squat like icons of the 20th century on a shelf, sliding with oil and water. And that's why the sea level is rising. Soon 100 years will be covered over, the swells of that catastrophe will vanish, and oil drills will emerge in new forms, the world guided by its own inventions and too much brain for imagination. If I were not ill in this basement flat in Jericho, I would, I swear, volunteer to be sailing to Byzantium with Rachel and Gaza's children and my book of ancient Irish poetry entering the second century. And then this is the last one, and it's called Seen, S-E-E-N. A real bungalow is made of stone and snow-white mud on the inner walls. A large grate and a slate floor and a picture of itself. Every cupboard is old, every glass and cup wiped clean. The wind cannot get in, so the flies are free to buzz against the glass. Outside, blue twine is tied to a telephone pole and a gate to keep the brown cows in their field. Fuchsia hedges, clover in full juice, purple clover, purple heather. There's a silver line on the sea between green sheer islands. Now the sound of the wind, playing a foghorn, enters forgotten.